This is Health Assessment 3310. We are going to do a head-to-toe assessment just so that you have an idea about what it is that we expect from you on final checkoff day. Um, I'm, we're going to assume already that the patient that we're seeing is here just for an annual physical, that we have already done his vital signs and have recorded them. But make sure that you are prepared to do your vital signs when you come in the day for checkoffs. Okay. Brian, Dr. Outlaw. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Um, I know you're in here for just a regular physical today, right? Right. Any problems or anything? Nope. Okay. All right. Well, this is rather an extensive um, assessment, so it's going to take us probably about 30 to 40 minutes. Okay. okay. I'm going to be asking you to do several different tests, and we're going to be going through um, some different exercises. And if at any time that you feel uncomfortable or that you have um, that you're not able to do anything, make sure that you let me know, and I'll stop. Okay. Okay. All right. So the first thing I'm going to do is I just want to look at your skin. Okay. Um, I'm looking at the color of it, the vascularity of it. I'm going to check your skin for her. Look like you're well hydrated. Okay. You have really vascular um, skin, probably because of your being so physically active. I'm going to look at your um, hands and your nails. Your capillary refill is less than three seconds. I don't see any kind of clubbing. I want you to do for me, Brian, is I want you to put your index fingers together for me like this. Okay, and hold them up like so that I can see them. Okay, so that they touch for me. There we go. Okay, that's called a shamrock test. What we're checking for is we're looking at the angle of your nails. And yours are fine. They should be less than 160 degrees. So yours look just fine. Okay, the next thing I want to do is I want to look at your head and your scalp. Um, I'm looking at the contour of your head, looking at your hair in general. You don't have a lot of hair up there, so keep it short, which is good. All right, so I'm just inspecting it, looking for any kind of lesions, any abnormalities, anything like that. Um, I want to look at the texture of it, the luster, I know the color, whether or not that you have um, any absence or excess. So it's very evenly distributed. So I want to palpate your skull. You feel any kind of um, tenderness or pain when I do that, Brian? No, it feels pretty good. Actually. Okay. All right. <laughs> Most people tell us that. I don't see anything as far as um, any kind of flaking or you no know, scalp problems or anything like that, right? Right. Okay. All right. So we kind of looked at your skin, at your hair, and um, at your nails. Now we want to look at your head, your neck, and your face. Um, looking at your face, I can see that um, you have two eyes, of course, that are evenly placed, symmetrical, your nose, your ears are um, symmetrical as well. Um, notice that you have facial hair that's also evenly distributed. Um, I want to um, go ahead and palpate your face. Any kind of pain or anything like that? Nope. Okay. All right, I want to palpate your frontal. And your maxillary sinuses. Any pain with that? Mm -hmm. Okay. If you did have a sinus infection, it would be uncomfortable when I palpated you right there. Okay. All right. Um, we'll look at your neck. Um, looking at your shoulders, they're um, even height. Okay. Um, I want you to, um, if you will, I want you to shrug your shoulders for me. Okay. That's actually assessing cranial nerve number 11, which is your access your accessory nerve. So. Fine. Um, go ahead and I want to see you swallow. Just take a um, sit for me and put your head back when you swallow so I can see your trachea move. Okay. All right. That is also assessing um, cranial nerve number 10, which is your vagus nerve. Okay. Now um, I want to palpate your trachea. Kind of pain or anything like that. I want to assess your thyroid, um, make sure that there's not any enlargement or any tenderness with it. So what I want you to do for me is I want you to take a sip of water and hold it in your mouth. And I'm going to give you some directions about how to hold your head. And then when I ask you to, I want you to swallow for me. Okay. And I'm going to kind of stand behind you. Okay. I need you to put your head down and to the right for me. Okay. All right. Um, now what I need you to do is swallow. Okay, all right, can you do that for me one more time and then put it to the opposite side? Very good. Okay, now I'm going to listen to your um, thyroid just to make sure that you don't have any breweries. Breweries is just, um, brewery just means that you have um, increased blood flow to that area. Okay. Could be also indicative of a abnormal thyroid. Okay. Well, I'm here and 
to go ahead and I'm going to palpate your carotids. You do them one at a time because I don't want you passing out on me. Okay. And while I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and do your temporals as well. to palpate your lymph nodes. It's um, not abnormal to have some lymph nodes that are enlarged, but you haven't noticed any changes, any discomfort from any lately. Mm. Okay. All right. These are your preauricular, your postauricular, your occipital, your retropharyngeal, your submaxillary, your submental. Okay. And if you will, turn your head for me this way, kind of tilt it to the side. It's your sternocleidomastoid muscle, and underneath this are your deep cervical chain. Okay. Um, in front of this is your um, is um, your anterior cervical chain, your posterior cervical chain. Okay. Which on the other side, so turn the other way down. Okay. Don't feel anything. Okay. And then I'm going to feel above your clavicles or your supraclavicular. A lot of room in there, Brian. And then below them for your infra clavicular. Okay. All right. Okay. Let's move on and um, look at. Let's go ahead and look at your ears. Don't do anything else. All I want to do is just look at them so that before that they're evenly placed. Um, that that outside of your canvas lines up to the top of your ear. Um, I'm going to palpate them. Any tenderness or pain with that? No. Okay, I also want to palpate your tragus. Okay. Now I want to look at the inside of your ears with this otoscope. What I need you to do for me is, if you will, tilt your head slightly to the side. There we go. Okay. I'm going to pull up and back. Curly gray, absolutely beautiful. Okay, and we're gonna look at this other side. So if you'll just tilt to the other side for me. I'll pull up and back again. Yes. Okay. All right. We've looked in your ears. Now what I want to do is a couple tests just to determine whether or not that you've had any hearing loss. Do you have any problems hearing, Brian? No. Okay. Um, I'm going to do um, a couple tests. One is called the Weber test. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to strike this tuning fork and I'm going to set it in the middle of your head. And I want you just to tell me whether or not that you can hear it equally in both ears or whether you hear it in one ear more than in the other. And which one you do hear it more in if you do. Okay. Does that make sense? <laughs> okay. Yeah, All right. Sense. All right. Here we go. Now this one is checking your bone conduction versus air conduction. In individuals that have normal hearing, you should be able to hear um, sound twice as long from your ears in for or air conduction as you do on the bone. So we're going to first, um, I'm going to strike the tuning fork again. I'm going to put it on the mastoid process um, behind your ear. And when you stop feeling it, I want you to tell me that you can't feel it anymore. Then I'm going to move it to the front of your ear and then I want you to tell me when you stop hearing it. Okay. okay? Okay, 7 and 25, so you're really good on that side. Okay, so we're going to do this other side. Equilibrium, so I'm going to get you to stand up for me. 
Okay. While I'm checking your belts, I'm also going to assess cranial nerve number eight, which is called your vestibular coccular nerve. Okay. So what I want you to do for me is I want you to put your hands um, out to the sides, like so. And I want you to close your eyes. And I want you to lift one foot up. Okay. That's okay. Go ahead. Lift one foot up one more time. Okay. Now put down. Okay. Now the other foot. Okay, very normal. Um, a slight amount of swaying is always okay, so it's really not a big deal. Okay, all right, I'm going to just sit back down. I'm going to look at your nose and I'm going to look at your mouth next. Um, while I'm looking at your nose, I already told you that it was it was centered, it was midline. Don't see it, um, doesn't look like you've ever broken it or anything like that. Well, they did a good job repairing it then. Um, any problems with. Um, Sinuses or allergies or anything? Okay. Never had a deviated septum or anything like that? You have. Okay. Yeah, you can still tell it's uh, set a little more on the left side. Okay. All right. So what I want you to do is just put your head back for me. Okay. Well, before I have you do that, I'm sorry. Let me just feel. Okay. All right. Now I'm going to have you tilt your head back. I'm just going to look. Oh, you definitely can tell. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Okay. All right, so, um, but no problems with being able to breathe or anything like no, that? No, it's not, not anything that gives me any problems. All right, good deal. Okay, now the next thing that I want to do is I want to check to make sure that because you have had, um, because you've had that happen, <coughs> I want to make sure that there's no problems with being able to smell. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to include one side of your nares, and I want you just to breathe out gently, and then I'm going to include the other side and do the same thing, okay? Okay. I'm going to this side. Now, the next thing I want to do is I want to actually check that smell. Okay, so I need you to close your eyes. Okay, and I want you just to tell me what you smell. I'm going to include this nostril. Just take a sniff. Can you smell it? I can't tell what it is, though. <laughs> Try one more time. Yeah, I, I couldn't tell how It's hard, it yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Vanilla, you're right. Okay. Let's try the other side. Okay. I'm going to play this one. Smell that one so you can determine that one. So, All right. Okay. Well, that's good. And I did try to pick things that you would know. Vanilla, cinnamon, yeah. cooking things. I just got the cookies. <laughs> I should have got that. Okay. All right. Next thing we'll look at is your mouth. Okay, so the first thing I'm looking at is just, I'm looking at the condition of your lips. Um, they're not chapped, there's no, um, you don't have any fissures in the corners, there's, um, there's no lesions, nothing like that. So I'm going to palpate them. So let me gently touch. Okay. All right. Now I want to look at the inside of your mouth. Okay, if you just open real wide for me. Just looking at your throat, at your pharynx. Okay, can you um, swallow for me? Okay, you see your, um, it's really hard to see your uvula actually. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I want to look at um, your Stinson's and your Wharton's ducts. Your Stinson's, if you'll, I'm just going to put this out here. I'm just going to look on the very top, right here. I'm going to look at this side, sorry. Okay, and if you'll put your tongue up to the roof of your mouth for me. Okay. Okay, and we'll look at the hard and soft palate. I think it's attached. Okay, very good. All right. Now, I'm going to do, I'm going to check your gag reflex. Mm -hmm. Kind of look forward for me a little <laughs> bit. Can you tilt your head down just a little bit? Okay. Promise I'll be gentle. Oh, yeah. That's pretty good, right? <laughs> All right. Um, actually, that also um, assesses um, cranial nerve um, number 10, your vagus nerve, watching the uvula go up and down, um, as well as the gag reflex. Now, um, what I want to do is, um, well, you know what, I forgot to, to check your teeth. Let me just make sure. No problems. I noticed, wow, no cavity. Very good. Okay. Okay. Now, what I want to do is I want to look at your Stick it out and just move it from side to side for me. Okay. All right. Um, so I get to leave that go. 
details. Absolutely. Well, you don't get to lick it. I'm gonna just, but I'm gonna place it on your tongue. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> that is actually sticking your tongue, um, sticking your tongue out from side to side. And if you will, before we do this, push your tongue on the inside against my fingers on the side. Okay. That's just checking your tongue strength, and that is um, assessing cranial nerve number twelve, which is your hypoglossal nerve. Okay. All right. So now I want to look at um, your tongue. So stick it back out for me. Okay. I'm just going to look at the underside. The reason that we look at the underside is because this is the most common place for um, oral cancer. Hmm. I always want to look at that. All right. Okay, so we're good with that. Okay, moving on. We're going to do um, a taste test. Hmm. I know you're going to enjoy this. Not sure. It's not too bad. What I want you to do is um, every area of your tongue has certain taste buds. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to have you close your eyes. And I'm going to put different flavors on four different areas of your mouth. And I want you to tell me what you're tasting. You don't have to tell me specifically what it is. I just want you to tell me if you taste sweet, salty, bitter, or sour. Okay. All right. So go ahead and close your eyes. I'm not getting too much of the. <laughs> okay, all right, stick your tongue out for me. Okay, I'm just quick. You can put it back in, just taste it. Does it taste? Sorry. Okay, all right. Very good. Do you want to sit and sorry? <laughs> That's the worst one. I'm not going to do it. <laughs> it's just solid. Okay. Okay, so you're trying to back out for me. Close your eyes. Good. Okay. I'll try that one. Sweet. Okay, very good. That is assessing um, cranial nerve number seven, which is your facial nerve. Now we're going to assess cranial nerve number nine, um, which is your glossopharyngeal. And we're going to assess um, the last two flavors. Okay. I'll take your tongue back out for me. Probably the least um, part that you like. All right, now we're going to move on to your arm, on to your eyes. Okay. Um, so let me get rid of this real quick. All right. When you first got here, um, oh my gosh, I'm Let's put it right here. when you first got here, we went ahead and we assessed your eyes using the Snellen chart, and your eyes were 20/20 um, in both eyes as well as in your right and your left eye. So you have really good vision. Um, I want to, um, while I'm thinking about it, what? 15, come on, okay. Um, I want you to, um, if you will, just hold this at, an, um, at a, um, an easy length for you, and I want you just to read the first two lines of that for me. <clears throat> Absorption rate. Measures how quickly a suture is absorbed or broken down by the body. Refers only to the presence or absence of suture material and not to the amount of strength remaining in the suture. Outstanding. Okay, that is actually assessing the other part of assessing cranial nerve number two, which is your optic nerve. Okay. All right, so now we're going to do a couple other tests. I want to just look at your eyes first. So if you just look straight ahead for me, let me get one that works a little better. I'm just going to have you look straight ahead for me. And I'm just looking at your eyes. I'm looking at the shape of them. I'm looking um, to make sure um, that they're clear. I'm not seeing um, any deviation in them. Both sides. Okay, I'll step right in front of you. Your pupils are um, equal. They're round. They definitely react to light. Okay. Um, what I want you to do now is we're going to check for accommodation. When you look from very close up to far away to back again, your eyes should very smoothly converge on whatever you're looking at without having any kind of jumping or anything like that. So we want to make sure that your accommodation is intact. Okay. okay. So I'm going to have you just look at this for me. And now I want you to look at something behind me on the opposite wall. 
tiny now look back at this. Very good. Okay. All right. So they look just fine. All right. There's a few other tests that we want to check. Um, we're going to do. Uh, we're going to check your visual fields in just a second. But first, I want to check your ocular motor um, uh, muscles. This is actually going to assess three different cranial nerves. It assesses three, um, four, and six. Okay. So that's your ocular motor, your trochlear, and your abducens. Okay. So the first thing I want to do is just look straight ahead. And I'm just going to shine this on the bridge of your nose. This is called a corneal light reflex, and I should be able to see the sparkle in the same place in both of your eyes, which I do. Okay, now I want to check your eyes for lazy eye. So I'm going to have you just look straight ahead at this. Okay. Okay, to the other side. Just keep looking straight ahead. Okay. Now, if you have lazy eye or some form of it, when I covered up the eye um, and removed it, that eye would have either drifted outward or inward. Okay, and here's where just one. Okay. Um, I also <coughs> want to do um, another test for your extraocular movements is called the H test. So what I want you to do is I want you just to follow my finger. Don't turn your head or anything like. Just follow my finger with your eyes. Okay. All right. <laughs> good. All right. Very good. All right. I think you can probably stay sitting there if you were just the right height. I also want to check your peripheral vision. Okay. This is called your visual fields. Now, this is a little bit tricky sometimes. So, what we're going to do is I'm going to have you cover up an eye, and I'm going to cover up the same eye. And uh, I want you to, when you see my fingers, when you see them wiggling, I want you to tell me. All right. Don't look out at my fingers. Just look me straight in the eyes while we're doing that. Okay, all right, so cover up um, your left eye for me. Okay, I'm going to cover up my right eye to begin with. Okay. And I want you just to tell me as soon as you see them. Okay. Yep. Okay, now keep your hand there. Now I'm going to move mine and I want you to do the same thing. Tell me when you see them. Okay. Yep. Yep. Keep your eyes ahead. All right, now switch eyes. Use your other hand. There we go. Yep. There we go. Okay, all right, same thing. We'll do it one more time. Let me straighten the eyes. I see it. Keep that hand there. Yep. 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 Good. Your peripheral vision is intact as well. So good job. Okay. All right. So that was three, four, and six as far um, as cranial nerves are concerned. Um, one last test that um, that we need to do is called direct and consensual. Um, direct and consensual is when I shine a bright light into your eyes. Um, the eye that does not have the bright light shining into it, it should do what we call consent and it should constrict as well. So you want to make sure that they both do that. Okay, so I'm just going to separate them, shine the bright light here. Good. On this side. Very good. Okay. All right. Okay, Brian, next thing that we want to do is we're going to look at your thorax. Okay, so we want to listen to your lungs. I want to make sure that I don't hear any kind of fluid. Do you have any respiratory problems at all? No. Do you smoke? Outstanding. Okay. All right. So I'm going to get you to stand up for me. Okay. Um, first, I just want to um, I just want to inspect. Okay. Um, I'm looking at your chest. I'm going to look at um, your thorax. And what I'm looking at is I'm looking at the anterior to posterior um, ratio versus your transverse. And from front to back, or your anterior to posterior, you should be um, once as your transverse should be twice. You should be twice as wide as you are thick. Okay, and you are, so that's good. All right, so I'm gonna get you to, if you will, come stand up here for me so you can see this. All right, um, what I'm gonna do is, I um, really just wanna look, I'm gonna palpate, so I want you to tell me whether or not that you have any kind of pain or any tenderness. No, I can roll a little harder. <laughs> you have, a, bit, you have a, a lot of musculature back here, so, um, it's really easy to feel the appropriate spots for being able to palpate. All right, what I'm going to do now is I want to make sure that you have what we call even symmetrical expansion so that your lungs are rising and falling at the same time. So I'm going to put my hands at the base of your own back and I'm going to pinch up just a little bit of skin and what I want you to do is take a deep breath for me. Okay, and let it out. Very good. Okay. They both um, fall at the same time. If you had a collapsed lung or if you had um, a pneumothorax, um, one of these would not rise at the same rate as the other one. Okay? okay. All right. 
Um, now I'm going to do what's called tactile lymphomitis. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place my hands on your back. And every time that you feel me place my hands on your back, I want you to say the number 99. Okay? All right. Okay, very good. All right, now I'm going to put Pez. Now we want to auscultate, um, just meaning that I'm going to listen to your lungs. Okay, so you have breath sounds, um, different breath sounds in the front than you do in the back. In the front you have your tracheal breath sounds right here, and you have your bronchial. Okay, your bronchial vesicular right here, and then everything else is vesicular. Okay, all right. In the back, um, you're going to have exactly the same breath sounds, except that, of course, you're not going to have any tracheal breath sounds. Okay, so we're going to listen to them using the diaphragm. Okay, what I want you to do, Brian, is I want you to breathe normally, but I want you to breathe just a little bit deeper than you normally would. Um, not real deep, because I don't want you to get lightheaded or anything. Just a touch, um, just um, a touch deeper than you would, and if you do start to feel lightheaded, let me know, okay? And then I'll stop. I'm going to check one more thing. This test is actually called um, bronchophony. And you're going to say the number 99 for me again, but this time you're going to do it um, every single time that you feel my stethoscope touch your back. And this is also just checking for um, fluid or any kind of consolidation in your lungs. Okay? Very good. If you would have had fluid or consolidation anywhere in your lungs, that would have been very clear to me. But it was very muffled, so that's good. Okay, now we're going to move on to um, your heart and your abdomen. So I'm going to get you to sit on the, um, on the table, and I'm actually going to get you to lay back. I'm going to get you to lay back without uh, letting no. things down. Okay. You all right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So the first thing that I'm going to do, Brian, is I'm going to um, get down here so that I'm eye level with your chest. You put your hands at your side for me. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, and what I'm looking at is I'm looking at the configuration of your chest. I'm looking for any kind of pulsations or abnormalities, which I do not see. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to palpate your chest. No pain, no tenderness, anything like that. Okay. All right. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to mark your heart valves. I'm going to listen to your um, lung sounds, or I mean to your heart sounds, but I want to mark your valves first, okay? All right, so on your right sternal border, right below at the second intercostal space, um, is your aortic um, valve, okay? Directly across from that, second intercostal space on the left, external border. It's going to be your pulmonic. Okay, at the third intercostal space on the left external border is um, your herbs point. Ooh, you're going to be mad at me if I rip off that hair, aren't you? <laughs> Fourth intercostal space <laughs> um, on the left external border is your um, tricuspid. And then midclavicular line at that fifth intercostal space is actually 
your mitral. Okay. Now, when I listen, when I listen to your aortic and your pulmonic, um, I'm going to hear the second sound of your heart, which would be the S2. It's going to be louder than S1. When I listen to Herb's point, they're going to be equal. S1 will equal S2. And then when I listen to the tricuspid and the mitral, the first sound, which is the S1, is going to be louder than the S2. Okay? I'm going to listen with both my diaphragm and with my bell um, so that I can make sure that you don't have any kind of heart murmurs or um, any abnormalities. Okay? First, I'm going to listen with my diaphragm. No heart problems or anything like that, Brian? No. No hypertension, anything like that? No. Okay. Okay, just relax. I'm just going to listen. Now I'm going to listen with my bell just to make sure that you don't have any kind of murmurs, okay? Okay. Sounds great. Nice and healthy. Sounds like you do, um, sounds like you um, take good care of yourself, work out. Okay. All right. I'm going to check your pulses. Um, we already checked your um, temporal and I've already checked your carotid. So um, the only ones that I have left to check are I'm going to check your um, brachial. Wow, Brian. All, my, all the students need to check your pulses and check your radial. Nice and strong. Check your radial here. Okay. Your popliteal, but we're not going to check those today. And then I'm going to check your um, posterior tibialis. And check your penile. Hey, you have a good pulse, it's Brian. Good deal. All right. Looks good. Okay. Just stay there for me. I'm going to look at your abdomen. And stay laying. Get kind of comfortable. Sorry. All right. Um, I want to um, just inspect. Again, I'm going to um, stay on this left side so I can um, so I can inspect it more easily. And again, I'm going to get down. Notice that um, that your um, abdomen is very flat. Um, actually, no pulsations or anything like that. So that's good too. I want to listen to um, your vowel sounds. I'm going to divide your um, abdomen into four quadrants, actually, okay, using your umbilicus as a reference point. So we're going to have four quadrants. This um, up here is going to be your right upper quadrant, your left upper quadrant, your left lower quadrant, and your right lower quadrant. Okay? And I'm just going to listen. Keep forgetting to turn my stethoscope back. <laughs> All right. Brian, are you hungry? <laughs> A little bit. You have nice active bowel sounds in all four quadrants. Okay, now I'm going to listen to um, your abdominal arteries. Okay. First one that I'm going to listen to is your aortic, and I'm going to do that with my bell. Okay, I'm going to listen to your renal. All I hear is bowel sounds. I'm going to listen to your iliac. Okay. And then you do have femoral as well, but we're not going to listen to those today. Okay? All right. So the reason that I was listening to the arteries is because what I was checking for was breweries. Um, if you were to have any kind of like an aortic aneurysm, I would have heard um, a brewery, especially in the aortic area of your um, abdomen, and it's just um, 
turbulent blood flow is how they describe that. So it had been very loud and kind of like, sounds like wind sometimes. Okay. So, okay. All right, so the next thing that I want to do is um, I'm going to percuss, okay, your um, abdomen. Let me know if you feel any kind of discomfort. I'm going to do that in all four quadrants. I'm going to um, percuss your liver borders. Okay. All right. I'm going to use your umbilicus as a reference point again. I'm going to come out to the side. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to percuss until I hear the sound change. the bottom of your liver. Okay. okay. I'm going to come up here and I'm going to come down to your fourth intercostal space. <laughs> okay. And I am going to, there we go, and I'm going to percuss back down. stopped when I heard that sound change again. So your normal um, length of your normal liver border should be two to four inches or six to twelve centimeters. Okay, so we're going to measure yours. Okay, and yours are actually 7.2, so that's good. Okay, all right. So we've gone ahead and now that I've got all this tape over you, I apologize. Now that we percussed, now we want to go ahead and we want to um, palpate. Okay, so I'm going to real lightly just palpate. Okay. And then we're going to do some deeper palpation, making sure that we've gotten all four quadrants again. Um, first, I want to, um, before I do deep palpation, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to palpate to see whether or not that I can feel your liver. Okay. Sometimes um, you can feel the liver, but it's not uncommon for you not to. So just lay flat for me. I'm going to lift your back up just a touch. There we go. Okay, now I lay back on. All right, so what I want you to do, um, Brian, is I want you to take a deep breath for me and hold it. Okay. All right, now I want you to let it out. Okay. I didn't feel anything except for muscle. So let's go over here on this side and let's feel the um, spleen. Okay, take a deep breath for me again, okay, and let it out. Okay, definitely didn't feel the spleen. We don't ever want to feel the spleen. If we feel the spleen, then it's possible that um, you could have an enlarged spleen, of course, and that, that may be indicative of mono. Okay, all right, so we're going to um, finish up with, we're going to do some deep palpation. Okay, again, still no discomfort or anything like that. Okay, all right, very good. Okay, now you can um, sit up for me. All right, that's the end of all the bad tasting stuff and everything like that, okay? Um, now I'm going to check your neurological status. Um, I want to make sure that you are what we call alert and oriented, so I'm going to ask you to state your name for me. Excuse me, Brian Kirby. Okay, can you tell me where you are, Brian? I am at Dr. Atwell's nursing building. Okay, my nursing building, I like that. Um, can you tell me what day of the week, what time of the day it is, Brian? It is Thursday, possibly 536 o'clock. Okay, very good. Okay, so you're alert and oriented. Now I want to um, do some tests just to um, check your memory, to make sure that you're not having any issues with your memory, which you don't think you are, are you? <laughs> not any unusual? Okay. All right, so. Um, I want to check what is called your recent memory. So in order to do that, I am going to give you three words. And I want you to remember these three words. I'm going to ask you them again later during the assessment. Okay. All right. Um, the words are black, white, and dog. Okay. All right. Now, I want to assess your present memory. So can you tell me who the President of the United States is? Obama. Okay. <laughs> and I want to assess your past memory. So can you tell me um, when your birthday is? June 24th, 1985. Okay. And I happen to know that's true because it is um, the same day as my son's, only um, a few years earlier. Okay. All right. Um, now I want to um, check your ability to make judgment. 
and your um, abstract ability, abstract thinking ability, okay? All right, so I'm going to ask you a couple of questions, and there's not a right or wrong answer to it. I just want you to tell me what comes to mind, okay? All right. If you were in um, a burning building by yourself, what would you do? Uh, probably. Okay. All right. That's testing your judgment. We hope that that's what you would do. All right. Now, I'm going to um, say a phrase to you, and I want you to tell me what does it mean to you. Okay. okay? Um, if I say um, the early bird gets the worm, what does that mean to you? Uh, you get up early in the morning, make it to where you need to be, be on time. All right. Very good. Okay. Now, can you remember what those words were? Like what, dog? Okay, I'm glad you remembered because I actually had already forgotten. So, okay, now, um, so we know that um, that you're alert, you're oriented, that your um, thinking capabilities are intact. Now we want to check some of your cerebellar and your sensory functions. Okay, um, there are actually five different tests that we check to make sure that your um, cerebellar functions are um, intact. Three of them are general. One of them was assessing your gait, which I saw you do when you came in. You walked straight, no limping. You didn't um, act like you were having any kind of difficulty or pain with that. Um, we've already done the Romberg test. Um, that assessed your um, equilibrium and your balance. So that's the second one. So I have one more for you to do. I need you to stand up for me. And just because I know that you're athletic, I'm going to make you do the hard one. So I need you to do a deep knee bend for me. Put your hands out and do a deep knee bend for me. Very nice. Okay. All right. So that's our third one, the, um, our third general. Now, we want to do one upper body um, test and we want to do a lower body test. So the upper body test that I want you to do is I'm going to put my finger up and I want you to, with your finger, to touch mine wherever I have it. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Very good. All right. Now, um, the one lower body that I want you to do is I want you to take um, one leg at a time, get your balance, and I want you to um, take your the heel of one foot and I want you to run it down the shin of your other leg. I want you to do that with both legs. Very good. Okay. All right. So your cerebellar functions are all intact. You can sit back down and we're going to do some sensory tests. Okay. There's actually um, several tests that we do for this, too. There's five tests for this, too. Two of them are sensory, and three of them are what we call discriminatory. Um, so the first one that I want you to do is I'm going to get you to close your eyes, okay? And you're going to feel um, a piece of cotton or something very soft on um, your face and on your arms and your legs. And I want you to tell me, just tell me, um, just say yes or if you feel it, whatever, as soon as you feel it, I'm going to touch you, okay? All right. Okay. So that's called soft touch. Soft touch actually also um, assesses um, cranial nerve number five, which is our trigeminal nerve. Okay. Oh, I'm just going to get you a piece of cotton there. Apologize. Okay. Um, now the next thing that we want to do is called sharp and dull. So I want you to close your eyes for me. Okay. I'm going to um, touch your hand. And what I want you to do, this is going to be sharp. Okay. And then this is going to be dull. Okay, so I just want you to tell me if you're feeling sharp or you're feeling dull when I touch you. Okay. Sharp. Dull. Sharp. Dull. Sharp. Dull. 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 I'm scared you're going to hit me if I do no. sharp too many more times. <laughs> Oh, and I just said I wasn't going to do that, didn't I? Cool. Okay, very good. Okay, so, yeah. <laughs> okay, last thing that we're going to do are called discriminatory tests. Um, so what I need you to do is I need you to close your eyes for all of these. Okay, the first one that I'm going to do is actually called stereognosis. And I'm going to place an item in your, both of your hands, one at a time, and you can roll it around in your hand however you want to, but I need you to identify it for me. Okay, and it doesn't have to be exact, just give me a general idea about what it is. Okay, so put one of your hands up for me. Okay, put that in there. Just tell me what it is. Key. Okay, all right, let's do the other hand. Core. Good. Okay, 
that's stereognosis. The next thing I'm going to do is called graphesthesia. So I need you to keep your eyes closed for me. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get you to put your hand up for me. And I'm going to trace a number in your hand. And I want you just to tell me what number it is that I'm tracing, okay? Okay. All right, I'm going to do the same thing in the other hand, only this time, instead of a number, I'm going to do a letter. Okay. Do it again. <laughs> a. An A. That's right. Very good. Okay. They're really not as easy as you think. So. Back there. <laughs> yeah. Okay. The last one that we're going to do is called um, two-point discrimination. So what I want you to do is, I want you to tell me whether you feel yourself being touched with one point or with two. Okay. All right. it as far as your neurological. The last thing that we have to do is we're going to check your musculoskeletal. Okay, so um, what I'm going to get you to do for me, Brian, is I'm going to get you to stand up. Okay. Again, um, part of making sure that, um, that you have a healthy musculoskeletal system is um, I've already watched you walk in. Um, I noticed that you, um, that you stand very straight, so the next thing I'm going to get you to do is I am going to get you to bend over. And just touch your toes because I want to examine your spine. Okay, your spine's nice and straight, no pain or anything like that. Okay. All right, you can stand back up. Okay, so I've already looked at your posture now. I just want to look at your joints. Just looking at them, don't notice that there's any abnormalities as far as the main uneven. So I'm going to palpate. checking um, as well as um, checking your joints I'm also checking your muscles and I'm checking them for um, size symmetry okay. Your hips. Yeah, one level. okay all right let me sit back down okay right, so um, we've already looked at um, your gait we've already looked at your joints we looked at your spine um, now I'm going to check your range of motion, and I'm going to check um, your muscle strength as well. So I'm going to give you just some real simple things to do. What I want you to do is I want you to take your um, hands and bring them straight out for me. Okay, bring them to the side. Just bring them up over your head. Bring them back down to the middle. Bring them down to your sides. Cross them. Okay. Now I want you just to take your hands, your arms, still put them straight out, and I want you just to rotate your wrists for me. Okay. No pain or anything with that, right? Okay. All right, now, your legs, um, I want you to do one at a time first. I want you to um, extend them one at a time as far as you can. Good. And back down, second one. And I want you to do them both at the same time. Okay. I want you to lift them both up and lift your knees up straight up. Okay. All right. Now, I want you to um, point your ankles. I just don't balance to. I want you just to rotate those ankles. Okay, now, now I just want to check your muscle strength, so um, I uh, have already looked at everything, but I'm going to use some resistance. So let's keep in mind that you're a little stronger than I am. Um, what I want you to do is I want you to put your arms up like this for me, okay, and I'm going to push against you, and I want you to um, push back against me, okay? All right, very good. All right, now I want you to pull. <laughs> All right. We're going to do um, the same thing with your legs. All right, put them, just put them, relax them. Okay, now push out. Okay, now pull back. All right, very good. Okay, you almost pulled me right off. Okay, so that's it, really. Um, I want to run through um, the cranial nerves one more time just to make sure that we got all of them. Okay, um, cranial nerve number one was your olfactory, which we checked with um, your smell. 
Cranial nerve number two was your optic nerve, which we checked with the Snellen chart and with the Rosenbaum test. Cranial nerves three, four, and six were checking, um, we checked with your um, vision as far as doing ocular motor tests, with doing the age test, and with doing your visual fields. That was ocular motor, trochlear, and your abducens. Okay. Number five was actually your trigeminal. We did soft touch with that, and one thing I forgot to do is um, I wanted to palpate your temporal mandibular joint. No problems with TMJ or anything like that, Brian? Okay. All right, cranial nerve number seven was your facial nerve, which we checked with the taste test. Um, cranial nerve number eight was vestibular cochlear, which we did with balance. Cranial nerve number nine was your glossopharyngeal, which we also did with the taste test. Cranial nerve number 10 was your vagus, which we did with the gag reflex, and we also did with swallowing. <coughs> Cranial nerve number 11 was your accessory nerve, which, and I forgot to do that as well, is we want to do your um, neck muscles. Okay, so what I want you to do is, I want you just to um, push your head against my hand, okay, on this side, okay, and back, okay, and forward, okay. And we'd already done the shoulder, try to do it one more time for me, okay. All right, so that's cranial nerve um, number 11, your accessory. And then cranial nerve number 12 was your hypoglossal, which we did with sticking your tongue out, back and forth, and with um, uh, the tongue strength. Is there anything else that, um, that we need to address today while you're here? Everything looks good as far as being um, nice and healthy, for sure. I'm good, though, Caroline. Okay, all right, I appreciate <laughs> your coming in. Thank you. All right, thanks, Brian. Okay.